Do people have the right to smoke in public? My father used to smoke. He got very ill. The doctor told him that he had to quit smoking. My father tried for a long time to quit. It was very difficult for him. Smoking is an addiction. After many months, my father finally gave up smoking, but he still craved a cigarette once in a while. He says that quitting smoking is the hardest thing that he has ever done. When my father did smoke, he smoked everywhere. He smoked in restaurants, stores, and many public buildings. Now, you are not allowed to smoke in a lot of public places. When my father smoked, the rules were not so strict. People could smoke just about anywhere. It really wasn't fair to the people who didn't smoke. Their clothes always smelled like smoke, and they breathed in secondhand smoke. Some people think that the secondhand smoke is actually worse for you than if you smoke yourself. People would smoke in their houses, and very young children would inhale the smoke that was in the air. Some people still smoke in their houses, and their children breathe in the smoke. Some restaurants have areas for smokers and non-smokers, but usually the smoke drifts from one area to the other. There are some businesses that have banned smoking altogether. Personally, I think that smoking in public places should be completely banned. I don't think that I should have to breathe in another person's smoke if I choose not to smoke myself. It wouldn't be fair for a non-smoker to get lung cancer because they had to be in a place where smokers were allowed to light up. I know that smoking is a powerful addiction and that it is very difficult to quit, but smokers should restrict their smoking to places where there is nobody else around. Lung cancer is an awful disease. Nobody should have to suffer with lung cancer. People should be educated about the dangers of smoking. Smoking should be banned in public places, but eventually, I would like to believe that fewer people will smoke. It would be nice to live in a smoke-free environment. My favorite bedtime story. Every night when I was little, my mother would read me a bedtime story. My favorite story was Tom's Midnight Garden. This was a story by Philippa Pierce. It was quite a long book, and it took quite a few nights for my mother to read the entire book to me. In Tom's Midnight Garden, Tom moves to the city to stay with his aunt and uncle. He is very bored at their apartment. They have no children, so Tom has nothing to do. One night, the clock strikes thirteen times. Tom knows that this is impossible. A clock can only strike up to twelve times. He sneaks downstairs and goes outside. When he goes outside, there is a wonderful garden that wasn't there the day before. The next day. Tom goes outside and finds there is no garden. The garden only seems to appear at night. Every night, Tom slips out to this wonderful garden and meets some people in the garden. He meets a girl named Hattie. Hattie and Tom become very good friends in this garden. Some very strange things happen in this book. There are some coincidences that keep you guessing about what is really going on. The surprise ending is wonderful. I really enjoyed Tom's Midnight Garden, and I was very sad when my mother and I came to the end of the book. I felt that I had visited the magical garden with Tom. It is a book that I will remember all my life. If I found a magic lamp. 
If I was walking down the beach one day and I happened to bump my toe on a magic lamp, I would pick it up and rub it. If it was a real magic lamp, but I don't believe that there really is a magic lamp, a genie would pop out in a cloud of smoke and he would call me Master. He would say that he would grant me three wishes. I would have to think very hard about those wishes because I wouldn't want to waste them. I don't think I'd want millions of dollars. Money doesn't buy happiness, or so they say. I might wish for good health because if your health isn't good, you won't be able to enjoy anything. Some people might wish for beauty, but beauty is only skin deep. Some people would wish for a mansion or a beautiful car or a big boat. I don't want any of those things. Some people would want fame. Some people would want talent. Some people would wish for happiness. That might be a good thing to wish for. Yes, maybe I'd wish for health and happiness, but what would my third wish be? I could wish for something enormous, something global. I could wish for world peace. That would be a wonderful thing if somebody could grant me that. Yes, that would probably be my third wish. It's too bad there aren't any genies inside magic lamps. I won't get my three wishes. I can still work toward getting my wishes. I can eat well and exercise to stay healthy. I can be involved with a lot of things and be with my friends to stay happy. I can volunteer my time to different organizations to help achieve world peace. I can do my fair share in my community to help others. That's how I can get my three wishes, not through a magic lamp. I can only get what I want through self-determination and hard work. That is the key to getting your wishes fulfilled. Superstitions I am not superstitious, are you? Yesterday was Friday the 13th. Some people think that Friday the 13th is an unlucky day. I think that it is just like any other day. Some people believe that if a black cat crosses your path, you will have bad luck. I don't believe that either. My mother always gets upset if I open an umbrella in the house. She says that is bad luck. She is probably right about that one because an open umbrella would take up a lot of space and you might knock things over. If your left hand is itchy, you are supposed to get money. I have had an itchy left hand before, but I haven't received any money because of it. It is bad luck to walk under a ladder. That is probably true because you might knock somebody off the ladder or have a can of paint fall on top of you. If you are acting in a play, it is bad luck if someone says, good luck to you. This is very confusing. You are supposed to tell an actor to break a leg. It doesn't mean that you want the actor to break his leg. It means good luck to the actor. Actors have a lot of superstitions that are very unusual. I am not superstitious. I don't believe in superstitions at all. It is just fun to learn about superstitions. Some of them are very old and have been passed down from generation to generation. I once did a project at school on superstitions. It was a very interesting topic and I got a good mark for it. Help Did you ever have to call for help? Were you ever in a situation that was an emergency? It is good to know what to do in case of an emergency. 
you should always know how to get in touch with the police and fire departments. I have read stories where very young boys or girls have called the police and saved their friends or family members' lives because they knew just who to get a hold of. If you see a fire, you should call the fire department. A lot of tragedies have been prevented because the calls have been made quickly. It is important that emergency vehicles arrive very quickly. That is why those vehicles have sirens. When their sirens go, it means to get out of the way. Policemen, firemen, and ambulance attendants are trained to handle very difficult situations. They often save people's lives. They go through a lot of training to become good at what they do. They never panic in emergencies. For your part, you should keep emergency numbers near the phone or know what the emergency numbers are. Where I live, there is a special number that you call for any emergency. We teach that number to everyone, even very tiny children. It is important to remain calm if you need help. If you call an emergency number, you have to be able to speak clearly and tell the person you are talking to exactly what the problem is. I hope you are never in an emergency situation, but it is a good idea to be prepared. The Peach Orchard When I was very young, I lived near a peach orchard. Now, there is a park where the orchard used to be. I always remember the peach orchard because my grandmother and I used to go there and pick peaches. The owner of the orchard would let all the neighbors pick peaches. It's not the fact that I used to get many ripe, tasty peaches that I remember. It's the time that I used to spend with my grandmother that I remember. My grandmother was very old, but she was very healthy. She used to walk a lot. I think that is what kept her fit. She had a lot of energy, so she liked to go to a lot of places. She would get a fruit basket, and then she would ask me if I wanted to go to the orchard. I always said yes because I enjoyed walking through the orchard on a sunny day. We never climbed up on a ladder to reach the peaches. We just reached for the low-hanging fruit. My grandmother and I used to talk all the time that we were out there. It was nice to spend time with her. She told me many stories about when she was a young girl. We laughed and got to know each other better. My grandmother only visited us during the summer. She lived in California and I lived in Niagara Falls, so we didn't get to spend a lot of time with each other. We enjoyed the hot summer days in the orchard. You could smell the peaches, and the bees buzzed lazily by us. My grandmother would point out different insects and birds to me. I learned a lot about nature from her. We would end up with a big basket of peaches. When we got home, my mother would wash the peaches, and often she would bake a peach pie for us. Nobody bakes a peach pie like my mother. It's good to have memories like that. Childhood memories of time spent with my grandmother are very precious to me. Sometimes it's just the simple things that you do in life that leave you with the nicest memories.